Okay then, before I start today's Retro Bat version 6.1 and PCSX2 emulation setup guide for Windows PC. If you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content that I upload almost daily on my channel, just Jamie. That just means you'll get notified every time I upload a setup guide like this one you're watching today. And it also helps out my channel a great deal too. Now, for those who's been with me on my channel for just over a year, you might remember when I last uploaded emulation setup guide for PCSX2. But of course, since then, we've had a couple of new Retrobat updates. And along with Retrobat updates come emulation updates to go with it. So of course, we got lots to look at today. And let me just remind you, if you've got a lower end computer, don't expect miracles. So the first thing I suggest doing is actually heading over to the PCSX2 website. If we go to the compatibility section, we can find just here which games work great and which games doesn't work so great. So perfect just here, we got 1.23% of the PS2 library. Perfect just means your games are going to run 100% brilliantly. Playable, they're gonna run just as well. In some cases, some might lag from my experience, but it doesn't say perfect. So like I say, just expect a few minor glitches and some lagging here and there. If we go to in-game and menus, I wouldn't suggest playing the games if they're in that category. If we scroll down, we can find the entire list of the PlayStation 2 library, and most of them are in playable, like we can see 97.92% are playable, but don't let that discourage you. Most games in that category are perfect, or at least I think so anyways. So just make sure to take a look at that and also be sure to take a look at your computer hardware and check out PCSX2 requirements because like I say, if you've got a lower end computer, it's quite likely games might not boot or they'll lag a hell of a lot. So now we know what we're doing here is we're gonna go to my BIOS folder and I've got this BIOS file and this runs perfectly for the couple of games I'm doing this setup guide with today. So what we're going to do is take BIOS file and we're going to go to the Retrobat directory. Easiest way of doing this is by right clicking on your Retrobat shortcut, going down to open file location, BIOS folder. Now, sometimes, and in fact, in most cases, your BIOS files would loosely go here anywhere. But for this, what we're actually going to do is find a PCSX2 folder, which is just here. We've got a BIOS folder in here and this is where your BIOS are gonna sit. So I'm gonna paste my BIOS file inside of there. And if I just come out and out again and out again, next up, we're gonna go to the ROMs folder. And in here, we're gonna find PS2. Here's PS2. Now I've got a couple of games to test out, like I was saying, in my games folder, I've got the quality Burnout Revenge, and I've also got God of War, both absolutely incredible games. These are in .iso file extension or format. So if you've got games in say .chd, that's great. They'll also work with PCSX2. And you know what? .chd games are gonna save you space too. If you're not sure what .chd is, I did a video recently on converting games into .chd. But anyways, what we're gonna do is drag our games into that Retrobat ROMs PS2 folder. Next up, what we need to do is actually open up Retrobat itself. Okay, so if you've done this correctly, we got PlayStation 2 now in Retrobat. I've got my two games here, so let's very quickly download some artwork in preview videos. If I press start on my controller, this is going to bring up main menu. From here, we can go down to Scraper, and I'm going to scrape now. Okay, so we're going to go to Game Settings, Update Game List, and press Yes. Okay, so scraping's done and everything looks great. So let's open up one of these games. So what we need to do at this point is actually download PCSX2 through Retrobat. If I just press yes on this. And if you get a little window pop up like I've got just here, just press yes.
Okay, cool. So as we can see, the game's running perfectly. Very good, in fact. So what we can actually do is make this look even better. Now, like I said just a minute ago, if you've got a lower-end computer, it's not worth attempting to do this, or you could attempt to do what I'm about to do, but expect lag. The best way to establish what supports your games best is by going to PCSX2 website and checking out its system requirements. So I'm pressing my select button to open up view options, and from here, if I go to advanced system options, First thing I'm going to do is just go down to shader. Now we can add scan lines if we want to. I'm not going to bother. If you apply a shader for your PS2 games, if you don't like it, just go to no and that will turn it off. Next up, we're going to go to decorations. Now on the sides of the gameplay just now, you've seen decoration, which is uh, the original PlayStation 2 Mark 1 model. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go up to none. Next up, game aspect ratio. By default, this is being displayed in 4x3. I'm actually going to put this to stretch fit to window for this. Integer scaling, pixel perfect, is already turned on. And what this is going to do is just add a slight blur to PS2 games. It takes away a little bit of pixelation. You can either press on or just leave it to auto, which is going to select on anyways. A vertical sync is absolutely paramount for PlayStation 2 games. A vertical sync is going to take away screen tear, especially in 3D games. And of course, PlayStation 2 had a lot of 3d games so just make sure for the best performance put yes on vertical sync now internal resolution is the next part we need to look at and this is going to be very demanding on some computers what we can do is actually upscale playstation 2 games to up to around 4k what i'm going to do for this is just put this on 1080p and the idea with this is to go for one of the highest resolutions and if it lags then we can go back to internal resolution and start decreasing it. So if I just put this one onto 1080p for this and what we're next going to do is go down to visual rendering and we've got anti-aliasing. So anti-aliasing by putting yes on this is going to take away jagged edges. So let's say for example the car that we're playing in Burnout has lots of jagged edges on top. If we put this to yes, that will smooth out those jagged edges. And again, a lot like internal resolution, by applying anti-aliasing, it's also going to take a little bit of strain on your CPU and GPU. Next up, we got bilinear filtering. Now, by auto, this is going to be using yes, smooth. I'm actually going to put this one onto sharp. Texture filtering. I'm going to put this one down to bilinear PS2. What this is going to do is add a bit more definition to the objects in the game. Trilinear fil filtering. I'm going to put this one to trilinear PS2. And with these settings applied, I'm then going to go back into the game. Cool, so there was barely any lag in that at all, but should you boot up the game with applied video settings like I've just done, normally your catalyst for causing lag is actually your internal resolution. So what I'm going to do is put this onto 4K, and if we open up the game again... Cool, and for me, by bumping this up to 4K internal resolution, it's absolutely working fine. Very smooth, in fact. So, if you happen to bump this up to 4K and you find it lags, then just go back to the sweet spot. And just remember, systems like PlayStation 2, it's all about increments. So, some of you might find out that 1080p is likely the best internal resolution. It's better to have fluid gameplay with no lag than having... 4K with lag, at least you can get a better experience than by using something like 1080p. Okay, so everything's running perfectly, but we still got some more video options we can play around with. So what we're going to do is press select again to view options, advanced system options. 
I'm going to leave this to 4K for now. Now what I'm going to do is go to visual rendering for this. I'm going to just drop down to anastrophic filter. And if I press A, now bear in mind, just like internal resolution, which I've currently set this to 4K and it seems to be working fine. This is going to affect your hardware too. So the more you increase anastrophic filtering, the higher demand it's going to take from your computer itself. So just like internal resolution, work with increments so for example if i say start for four times on this and let me just remind you anastrophic filtering is going to add a little bit more definition to textures within the game so i'm going to start with four times on this let's go back into the game again And as we can see by increasing that, there's no lag for me at all. So it just means I go to advanced system options and just go back down to visual rendering. And this time, because there was absolutely no lag whatsoever, I'm actually gonna take the biscuit and go to 16 times. Go back into the game. And as we can see, absolutely perfect. So I pretty much max this game out. Now I'm actually using an i7 11th gen with an RTX graphics card. And this is running fine for me. I'm also going to mention here that it's not necessarily the case. This is going to apply to all other games. For example, if I was to run another game, which I've got God of War, the same video settings might not be so stable. So if we check out God of War using those same settings. The gods of Olympus have abandoned. Now, in my case, those same video settings are also working amazing on God of War as well. But this might not be the case for every PS2 game out there which you're willing to try. Now, because this is going so well for me, nothing's lagging. I can actually go to internal resolution and maybe even go up to times 8. So remember, it's always about looking for the weak spot. Now, if you're feeling really nostalgic for PlayStation 2 and you fancy the BIOS screen before the game loads up, we just go to Advanced System Options. We scroll down, we're going to find Emulation. Skip BIOS, this is set to yes. If we put no, let's open up God of War with 8K. And as we can see, the game is very choppy now for the reason that I've gone to internal resolution and I've actually turned this up to times 8 So it just tells me that by leaving this to times 6 4K is quite likely the sweet spot. And that's it for today's RetroBat version 6.1. PCSX2 setup guide so there's a lot of opportunity within PCSX2 through Retrobat to really make your PlayStation 2 collection look very awesome but like I've been saying throughout the video just work with it through increments and just be mindful too that if you have got a lower end computer you're not necessarily going to match the video settings I've matched different computers have different specs obviously anyways if you liked today's video hit notification subscribe and like so you don't miss 
out on upcoming retro emulation content that I pretty much release every day on my channel, Just Jamie. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And let me just remind you that I've got a merch store and there's some really cool stuff in my merch store. I've got t-shirts, mugs, and everything else. But anyways, check that out. Until next time, stay retro.